For anyone who's ever taken a film class before, you've gotten at least one long-winded spiel about the importance of music. How it correlates with a scene, its effect on the editing, if it's worth mentioning on Letterbox. And the reason it's important is because a song can completely change the tone of what it's behind. But this rule with music applies to more than just film. I only brought it up because it's what I studied in college, and I need to find some way to use my degree. Uh... No, because this is especially apparent with what we're talking about today. Which, surprise surprise, is video games. Music is vital to games. Oftentimes, it's the thing we remember most about the experience. Like, do you think people remember Dire Dire Docks for all the long, boring hallways you gotta swim through? No, they remember it because the music is literally the best thing ever. It highlights the peacefulness of the stage and how all you can really do is just observe it. With Dire Dire Docks, the normal theme is very calming thanks to its instrumentation and floatiness. But because video games are interactive, a simple change in music can do a complete 180 on your psyche and even how you play it. Now let's see what happens when we change it. Uh, you. Yeah, kinda different. With this small change, the stage goes from an aquatic utopia to a flooded wasteland. Instead of noticing all the peaceful things, you now realize, hey, that shark ain't looking too friendly. Or these hallways are pretty claustrophobic, and why can't Mario swim a little faster? Come on, buddy! Granted, this is an extreme example, and I know I had some choice words about scary music in my last video, but if done correctly, music can recontextualize not just a stage, but an entire game itself. And today I wanted to look at a game that does this as a result of its two completely different soundtracks. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause for Sonic CD. For those, una For those unaware, Sonic CD was originally released in Japan in September 1993. But with Sega being... <laughs> Sega, they delayed the US release by two whole months just so it could have a new soundtrack. This was apparently done for marketing reasons as they wanted it to be more musically rich and complex compared to the Japanese one. And whether that's true or not on a music theory level, it's been unanimously agreed on for years that the Japanese version is the superior soundtrack. It's been considered one of, if not the best Sonic soundtrack of all time. Which honestly is saying something, because even though the games vary in quality, the music is always incredible. Like, I unironically have His World on my running playlist, I'm not ashamed to admit that. But as a result of how much praise the Japanese version's gotten, it's caused the US one to fly under a lot of people's radar. Now this could be for a lot of reasons, maybe it's the version of the game they played, personal preference, or how often they hear it in the background of YouTube videos. Ah. The first time I tried Sonic CD was on the Gems Collection for GameCube, which natively had the US soundtrack. And at that age, I remember thinking it was alright, but nothing special. Then when I tried the re-release on Steam a few years back, I was blown away by the Japanese soundtrack. The fast tempos, driving hooks, and a wide variety of genres and sounds. One minute you'll be listening to the funkiest thing ever, and the next it'll be Vaporwave when it was, you know, still annoying but not as bad. Songs like Stardust Speedway have become staples of the Sonic franchise because of how much personality they have. J just listen to this. But about a month ago, I had an urge to revisit CD and decided to use the US soundtrack this time. And after finishing it, I will say, I still prefer the Japanese one, but this soundtrack is severely underrated. Oh, say can you see by the dawn? Unlike the Japanese version, the US one is a lot more subdued with its arrangements. A lot of songs have medium tempos and play more with ambience rather than a groove or a hook. It's also heavily rooted in rock rather than multiple genres, with its main instruments being guitars, drums, keys, and a lot of vocal layering, actually. 
And like I said with the Dire Dire Docks example, this can completely change the tone of a stage and the game. Let's look at a subtle one first, like Tidal Tempest. Being the water stage, it has the responsibility to have the best music in the game, and both versions deliver in their own way. The Japanese version is open and dreamy thanks to the multi-layered piano tracks that drive the song and progressively echo in the background. For me, it highlights all the old architecture and ruins in the stage, making it feel ethereal and full of history. On the other hand, we have the US version, which is a lot snarkier from the vocal layering and sharp bass line. This one complements a lot of the darker visuals in the stage, the mountains in the background, the deep caverns below. Oh my god. It doesn't make the stage unsettling, but it doesn't feel as comforting as the Japanese one. Granted, given the stage's more defined visuals and set pieces, they hit a lot of similar tonal beats. Because even though the soundtracks were made by two different composers, sometimes a level can feel so defined there's not a lot of uh, wiggle room for different interpretations. This is also the case for, like, Palm Tree Panic, where, because it's so bright and colorful, you can't really use any other music that isn't bright and colorful. Like, yeah, one song is faster and uses different instruments, but it's not gonna change the way you interpret a stage. But how about we look at a stage where that is the case? That being Collision Chaos. The Japanese track is a lot bouncier and groovy, thanks to the rhythm. This plays into the casino look. The flashing lights, pinball bumpers. It's like Casino Night from Sonic 2, but, you know, purple. What if it was purple? Now let's compare that to the US version. <laughs> Why'd I say it like that? Yeah, that doesn't really uh, sound like a casino. For me, this track gives Collision Chaos a whole different aura. The distorted guitar swells and piano makes it much more intense and desolate. It's like you're a wanted fugitive running from the cops. And with this, you'll notice a lot of the unsettling details about the stage. These weird pillars jutting out of the ground, the ominous red clouds in the sky, and just like spikes are everywhere too. This is where the US soundtrack shines the most, using atmosphere to create a more unsettling version of the game. This is especially the case with the Bad Future variants. Quartz Quadrant gives off a feeling of hopelessness as you witness this once lush stage be overrun with machinery. Like, honest to god, it sounds like a Metroid game. Check this out. Or how about title Tempest Bad Future, where the track is now cold and mysterious to exemplify the life being sucked out of this world. The bleak color palette, the industrial background, it's, it's honestly pretty unnerving. As much as I love the Japanese soundtrack, I honestly think the US version outdoes it here. Because the former emphasizes speed and intensity, it can get a little carried away at times and lose that unnerving mystique. Like some of these just sound like you're panicky high at a rave. Like, yeah, it makes sense thematically, but it, it, it's just it's just a little much. The best example of the US's creepiness, though, comes from the boss music. Dear God, the difference in these tracks. The Japanese one isn't bad. It, it has a nice flair thanks to the hip-hop-inspired rhythm, but it's kind of weighed down by the goofy-as-hell rapping in the background. This music's way too loud, I can't hear it. 
Now let's compare that to the US version. All right, Sonic CD, boss music. Oh my god. <laughs> the deep and rapid piano notes, the distorted droning sounds, and that laugh. Oh my god. It makes everything feel so dreadful. Eggman has always been a threat in the games, well, except for like Sonic Lost World where he's just a dumbass, but here it's to a whole other level. You actively see the world dying around you. If you don't put a stop to his actions, this is all the future has in store. Of course, you can infer that even without music, the, you know, the, the visuals in the game are striking enough. But this song, and most of the US soundtrack, exacerbates the grim undertones of Sonic CD and results in an experience like no other. But sadly, um, it's not always the case. Not every song sucks you in as much as the ones I listed, which realistically makes sense because every soundtrack is going to have those not as great songs. But the problem is when a track isn't luring you in with a rich atmosphere, it's just kind of existing. Like they're not bad, they just feel underdeveloped and repeat a lot. Some of these also don't fit the setting they're matched with, which is ironic because I was just praising it for that. It's only a handful of songs, but it can be pretty glaring when you encounter it. Like, take a listen to Wacky Workbench. It's alright, but nothing in it screams, hey, I'm in a factory. That is wacky, no less. Now compare that to the Japanese version. See, that's what a wacky workbench should sound like. The percussion, the electronic samples. It gives off a very mechanical sound that fits perfectly. And that goes double for the bad future. I know I said the Japanese Bad Future tracks could be a little much, but it fits here combined with the alarm in the intro and the rusted, decrepit look of the stage. It's like it went from wacky workbench to silly sweatshop. Now this is where the Japanese soundtrack shines. It may not have the dark undertones of the US version, but it has a great personality. I, and I mean that, I really do. Like I said earlier, the Japanese version uses a wide variety of genres instead of being rooted in just one like the US. As a result, it's able to experiment with tons of sounds, styles, and compositions to find what suits a level the most. Again, it may not be as atmospheric, but oh my god, its hooks are insane. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna play some of my personal favorites so, so you can get an idea of what I mean. This speedy, in-your-face sound is what a lot of people look for in Sonic music. Whether it's melodic, heavy, technical, just something that emulates the sensation of going fast. That's why I feel a majority of people prefer the Japanese soundtrack. The US one is great for giving a darker recontextualization of the game, but man, sometimes you just want to hear bops, and this one is full of them. But at the end of the day, this all comes down to one thing. Preference.
I'm not trying to convince you which version is better. I, I mean, I still prefer the Japanese one, as I feel it's more consistent and has better variety. But that's just completely undermining the value of the US version. They change the tone in ways that makes it feel like you're playing two different games. And all that matters is how it affects your enjoyment. Because man, being real, good music can go a long way with making a game more fun. Sonic CD, in my opinion, isn't really that good of a game. I mean, for a Sonic game, it's alright. You, you can do a hell of a lot worse. But for a 2D Sonic game, it it's kind of bad. Most of the level design is super vertical and doesn't complement speed very well. Granted, this is because the game is focused more on exploration given the time generators and stuff, but just look at Wacky Workbench. D does this look fun to you? Also, the time travel mechanic is really hard to pull off. Not only do you need precise knowledge of the map to maintain your speed, it also just doesn't work most of the time. Find a hallway, clear out all the enemies, and hope you don't run into some dumb shit. I'm stuck. What the fuck? I am actually stuck. Oh my god. I hate this game so much. That's why I go after the time stones if I ever want the good end, you know? It may not be as fulfilling, and you don't see all the variants of the stages, but at least it works. I mean, somewhat. The special stages are kind of jank, too. Cool backgrounds, though. I don't revisit Sonic CD a lot. In fact, I don't know why I did a few months ago. But when I do, I at least know I get a great soundtrack out of it. Again, it feels like two different experiences depending on which one you choose. Do I want to experience the more upbeat and colorful parts of the game, or the darker and more unsettling parts? It all really comes down to one small choice in the options menu. So for the people out there who do love this game, maybe try shaking it up on your next playthrough and use the soundtrack you don't normally listen to. Because who knows, you might find a new appreciation for it and Sonic CD as a whole. A simple change in music can do everything. At least for me, if you think music has no effect on the tone at all, then sorry you wasted your time on this video. Also, if you're wondering why I didn't mention the past versions of the songs, it's because they're the same in both soundtracks. Apparently, they were PCM audio files rather than CD audio like the rest of the music. Basically, if Sega wanted to change the past tracks, they'd have to reprogram the game's code. I'd like to think that wasn't intentional. 